Good evening, everyone. We're so glad you've been able to join us for our pre-service meditation here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Welcome to all of you who are joining us via Zoom or Facebook Live. So for the next 10 minutes, we're just going to give ourselves the gift of anchoring our awareness in the now, just getting still. Let's close our eyes. Let's turn our attention inward. And as a means of keeping our awareness on the very now moment, let us focus on the breath, noticing each in-breath, the little pause between the in-breath and the out-breath, the out-breath, pause, and then the in-breath. And if it helps to keep your attention focused, you can just silently say to yourself, breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out as you exhale. And if you notice your mind wandering when you catch yourself, this is a great time to exercise non-judgment, compassion, to just know the mind has a tendency to want to get engaged. So just take a note of where it has gone Maybe reminiscing about the past, what has happened up until now. Thinking about the future, maybe noticing a sound or a sensation. Just take note, be with that for a moment. And then let those thoughts drift away as you bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out.
So as our meditation comes to a close, I invite you to bring your awareness back into your body. Be aware of the surroundings and to anchor your attention into the body you might want to just wiggle your hands and toes. And when you feel ready, just open your eyes. And so once again, welcome to our virtual Wednesday evening service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. To any of you who joined us since the meditation began, we're so glad you're with us this evening virtually. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by our soloists this evening, Darius Lux and Sam Krieger. God is in this place. Let's join together in prayer and absolutely know that. That God is in this place because God is in all places, all things, all beings, everywhere, at all times. Because truly, there is only this one life of God. And that life impels itself into creation and lies at the center of all that is, that God's nature is present in everything and everyone, including me, including each and every person gathered for this virtual service this evening. And I know that we are responding to the impulse of God for a greater awakening to itself through us, to have a greater realization of its nature through each of us. I know that every part of this service supports that intention, that we are uplifted by the vibration of love in which we feel our connection, the love of all of those who are of service this evening. We are absolutely inspired by the beauty and the artistry of Sam and Darius this evening through their music as they share their musical talents with us. And I open to being that vessel through which the message that we've all come together to hear this evening flows from that infinite mind that we all get to awaken to a greater realization of that goodness that lies in the, at the center of each and every one of us and that we get to experience it more fully as a result of this time together. So I give thanks right now for the blessings that we receive in this time together. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good evening, everybody. I hope you're well out there in Cyberland. Uh, this is an original song. It's called Surrender, A Higher Power. Thank you, Darius and Sam. Beautiful. Ah, oh, well, good evening. So I wanted to look at this idea of 
transcending woundedness. Anyone ready for that? <laughs> you know, our founder, the founder of our uh, teaching, Ernest Holmes, once charged practitioners, uh, those who have signed up to absolutely not only practice this philosophy, but to be there to know the truth for others, to look upon every being that comes to them with a challenge, with the consciousness of perfect God, perfect human, perfect being. Reflecting the core philosophy of science of mind that God's nature within all of us is perfect, whole, and complete. So our core nature is perfect, whole, and complete, as I discussed last week, but as I mentioned last week, admittedly, that may be true on some level, but it certainly doesn't always look like that or feel like that, does it? And what we would explain in Science of Mind is that, is that when it's not feeling like there's this presence of perfect wholeness in each of us and around us, it's due to the fact that We've been given freedom. Part of our spiritual nature is the freedom to discover that spiritual essence of our being. So God, in a sense, as the Hindus will say, puts a veil of forgetfulness around itself in each of us to have an awakening experience to itself, to discover its nature, and to find unique ways in each of us to experience and express it. So although we can never tarnish or change or do any kind of damage to that spiritual core, we can feel separate from it. And we can feel separate from God, we can feel separate from one another, we can feel separate from the good goodness of God that's available to each and every one of us. And those ways that we feel separate, uh, that we falsely believe that we are separate from God, create negative circumstances, negative experiences, from which we can all feel wounded. And so as I was exploring this topic, I thought about this term, walking wounded. Have you heard uh, someone refer to someone else as, oh, they're one of the walking wounded? So I found out that that actually originated as a military term um, way back when, when soldiers who were injured but uh, their injuries were not life-threatening. They were given a lower priority in terms of who to, you know, try to work on uh, as soon as possible, that they could walk around, but that they did have wounds that had to be addressed. And as I was thinking about this, well, you know, later it took on this meaning of people who have been damaged or psychologically defeated by experiences of life. And as I thought about that, I thought, you know, on some level, I'd say that until we fully sense our oneness with God, that we are absolutely aware of that divine presence in and around us that's bigger than anything that's going on in the world, no matter how disparate circumstances may appear, that there's this underlying goodness in us and everything and everyone that's there to be revealed. Until we really live in that state of consciousness all the time, there are gonna be areas in our consciousness where we feel separate, where we could use some healing, ways that we don't feel connected to God. And so we are, in a sense, some version, some degree of walking wounded as we move through life. But the important thing to remember, as I said earlier, is that our core, the core nature of God can never be damaged. It cannot be tainted. It cannot be harmed. And so whatever hurts or wounds we may experience in humanly can be healed. You know, there is this greater presence of God's nature that can be brought forth to heal them. As a matter of fact, our wounds, the discomfort, the pain that they cause are actually there to get our attention. That they serve the purpose 
the, the discomfort and pain that we feel from whatever wounds we're carrying is there to get our attention to address those areas of our consciousness and to heal them. It's kind of like you know, with our physical wounds. The pain that we experience in our physical bodies is there to get our attention. You know, when you put your hand on the stove, on the hot burner, and it hurts, it's to get your attention. Don't do that. Get your hand off the burner. And now the pain that you're feeling means you need to address this. You need to do something to help facilitate the healing. Well, the same is true for our, with our emotional wounds. You know, we want to pay attention to when they surface and heal them. So what am I talking about when I talk about woundedness? Well, a signal for us of some wound is when we have some knee-jerk negative reaction or response to something. I like to think of it as, uh, you know, if you have a physical injury, uh, let's say some kind of injury to your arm or your foot or whatever, and someone bumps into that injury or steps on you in that area, you have you know, a knee-jerk reaction, right, to express your pain so that they will not do that and to be aware that that, that area of your physical body needs some healing. When we respond to something with a sense of anger or hurt or upset in any way, there's some inner wound in us that's been stepped on, that's been bumped, that's been triggered. Because if we consistently felt our oneness with God, if we always identified with that essence of God's nature, there's absolutely nothing that could happen to us on the human plane that would trigger us because we would know that our God nature transcends it all. Nothing could upset us. And so what we want to do when we notice that we've had some kind of negative reaction to something is to take responsibility for that. Not, when I say take responsibility, it's not to assign blame but to simply acknowledge that whatever is happening out there is what's happening out there. Our reaction to that is where we can make some choices. Our reaction is something that we can change. You know, it doesn't mean that the situation that upset us or the behavior of the person that hurt us is okay, but that our core, at our core, we are. Okay, we, there's something in us that's bigger than all of that. Any tendency on our part to focus on and identify with, hold on to that wound, prevents us from experiencing God's goodness that's right there to be called forth. It's, it's kind of a way of turning our back on God, you know, on ways to experience goodness, um, you know, that we could call forth despite what's happening or what happened. It's almost like, you know, the universe is saying, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's happened to you, there is this incredible goodness in you and incredible ways that you can make good of this situation. And we're holding on to the wound, just saying, no, no, I, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to allow myself to feel or experience any sense of joy or any sense of peace or any sense of goodness whatsoever until that changes. Real helpful reaction, don't you think? Taking responsibility is simply about starting to acknowledge the sting. We start by acknowledging the sting, the hurt, the upset. But then we don't stay there, okay? We don't have to create this identity of I am so wounded by this. That's who I now am. I am the hurt one. I have been hurt. I have experienced some hurt. But that's because there was some way I was not feeling my connection to God that was bigger than what was going on. And I'm going to work on that. Okay, so we admit that there's a sting there. And then we do something to start to heal the wound. 
that triggered the response. And when we in injure ourselves physically, ideally, we acknowledge the pain of the injury and then we take action to soothe and facilitate healing, right? I hope I heard a lot of rights out there. <laughs> well, so it is with our inner sense of wholeness, or I mean our inner sense of woundedness, that what we want to do is move to a place of knowing our wholeness. And the way to do that is to turn to love. Love is the salve for the soul. Love is the vibration that heals any sense of woundedness that we are carrying in our consciousness. So, you know, what that might look like is, okay, so as we acknowledge our feelings of being hurt or angry or discouraged, whatever, we recognize, okay, this is due to some area where I'm not feeling my connection to God right now. I am not really sensing that nature of God in me that's bigger than whatever upset I'm experiencing. This is an opportunity for me to gain a greater sense of love, of self-worth, of faith, of wholeness, whatever it is that we're feeling disconnected from in terms of in God's nature. And we call forth love through our spiritual practices that help us to remember that God's nature in us is greater than any human conditions, any human circumstances. You know, that love in us that knows itself to be bigger. Every spiritual practice that starts to remind you, it's almost like you're aligning with that presence, that higher power, if you were to personalize it, that's just saying, I know that's what you're feeling humanly, but I'm bigger than that. I can lift you out of that. You're just not seeing and knowing the truth about yourself right now. So our spiritual practices actually are ways that we take that vibration of love to know the truth about ourselves. And as we do that, as we keep reminding ourselves that vibration of God's wholeness is bigger than any wound we're feeling, the healing starts to happen and we move out of that state of woundedness. One of my early experiences in Science of Mind, when I was fairly new to the teaching, where I got to really understand that, you know, these negative reactions are about our inner wounds occurred. I was still in my uh, corporate job years back. And at one time I was attending a lot of meetings around the country with, uh, there were different managers and directors that would get together. And very often it was uh, people from departments where we had, maybe they had the same function, but you had an East Coast version of that um, area of responsibility and a Midwest uh, version and a West Coast version. And you know we would come together in large groups and just talk about things. And there was one manager that had a habit, I noticed, of really aggrandizing herself and her department. And it wasn't just about her talking about how well things were going and how well she was running things, but there was always a way that she found to undermine and sort of put down another manager in uh, you know, her equivalent in another part of the country. This irked me to no end. I cannot tell you how no, I hated attending those meetings if I knew that manager who, you know, the self-aggrandizing person was going to be there. And so I was fairly new to the teaching, to the sides of mind. I had an idea about it, but I'd started going to see a practitioner. And so I went to the practitioner realizing this, how much this upset me. And so I asked her to please pray for this woman who was being berated or put down, although it didn't really seem to bother her. But um, I wanted prayer for her and prayer for things to go better and this woman to not behave the way she was behaving. And the practitioner very gently said to me, well, I'm absolutely fine with holding this idea of you know, harmony and something good coming forth from all these relationships. 
Um, but I think we should focus on you know, some healing that you need to do here. I've got me. I'm not part of that situation. I'm not the one, you know, doing this or that or the other. And she just looked at me and she said, but it's upsetting you. I went, yeah. She said, well, if you really felt your oneness with God, you wouldn't be upset by this. You would just be seeing what good you could bring to it. Oh, okay. She had a point. <laughs> and so with great compassion, I mean, she was such a presence of being able to look and say, well, what, what's going on in me? What, what wound was there that triggered these reactions? And it was very easy to start to identify that there were beliefs uh, that others' opinions could somehow devalue me, that if people didn't see my value, that that could somehow diminish my value. There was uh, a belief that someone putting you down, that somehow that could diminish one's value. So although it wasn't happening to me, I was relating to it in that way, and it was pointing me to my wound to work on. And so as I worked on this idea of knowing that nobody's opinion about me or anyone else could diminish my value or anyone's value. In God, we're all held in unconditional love. And as I did my work, I came to realize that the woman who was always you know, self-aggrandizing and feeling this need to put down this other manager, I realized, well, there's got to be something in her that makes her do that to feel her goodness. That's all that's really behind this, is she's wanting to feel her goodness. And somehow that just dissipated the energy that I could be with the whole situation. I also noticed that the manager who was put down periodically at the next meeting, I noticed she could let it roll over her back, but when the woman who was putting her down started saying, well, because we've had this success, you need to start doing things in that way. She very calmly could stand up and say, well, you know, I applaud you for doing that in your organization, but that wouldn't work in my case. Here's why. There was no sense of woundedness around it. And I went, that woman really feels her wholeness. She's able to speak up. And what came out of that, when my energy dissipated, there was an opportunity at some point down the road I actually could see some of the really nice aspects of this manager who had driven me crazy before. And we would have some nice conversations. And one day she made a derogatory remark about the other manager. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I have to say, I noticed that you make derogatory remarks about her a lot. And I just think you're terrific at what you do. And she does, you know, she manages her department really well too. It's just different styles. And because there was no hostility associated with it, I think there was just such a different energy, she actually heard it. Like, this light went on where she just said, I do that, don't I? And it changed. I won't say it never happened again, but it rarely happened after that. But the bigger point is, when I worked on my wound, I got to then show up and be a presence that could work with others constructively. I got to see a lot of qualities in the people that I wasn't even noticing before, you know, and, and make some good professional uh, alliances and friendships because I wasn't paying attention to that before. I was just so irked by this person's behavior. When we recognize our knee-jerk negative responses as coming from some wound, and we bring our spiritual practices, we bring the knowingness of that greater presence of God, when we bring love and compassion to that, keep focusing over and over again on God's nature being greater than whatever situation. We transcend the wound, we rise above the pain, and then we open to ways to make good of all situations. So I invite you to turn your attention inward. And allow yourself 
to call forth anything that currently causes you to feel any form of upset. Just pick one. And as you allow yourself to feel that emotional response, just take a breath and acknowledge that that emotional response is pointing you to an area where you're feeling separate from God. And remind yourself that God's love, God's wholeness, God's goodness in you is untouched, unscathed, untainted despite this experience. And ask yourself, what part of God's nature is this inner response inviting you to know and embrace and embody more fully? Is it a greater sense of your wholeness, self-worth, faith that good ultimately prevails? And whatever you discover is that aspect of God's nature that you are being called to know at a deeper level. Allow yourself to feel that coming forth and imagine yourself moving into a state of greater peace, greater well-being, that whatever the situation is, you are able to just see it, be present with it, feel your wholeness, and from there, find a way to respond constructively. And know that you have opened the portals of your consciousness to transcend this wound and to a greater knowingness of your oneness with God. And so from this place, I invite you to join me in knowing the truth of God's presence in all beings, all situations at a deeper level, knowing that that presence of infinite love and light and wholeness is the essence of every being, every situation. It is there to be revealed. Let us know that for those who are finding any kind of struggle with the changes that life brings on this human level, things are always changing, that there's this greater awareness coming forth of the unchanging nature of God that has been there before we ever were born that continues on beyond this earthly life, that it is eternal, unchanging, and that it can always be tapped into as things change humanly, as even loved ones depart this plane of existence, that it is a vibration that never dies, that in which we are always connected and that we can always experience in a new way. Let us join in knowing that that vibration is one of perfect health and wholeness and vitality so that where humanly there are experiences of dis-ease and discord right now with so much attention on the pandemic, that there is a presence of wholeness and divine intelligence that we call forth, that we know is revealing itself, revealing the perfect pathways to healing, physical healing, emotional healing, that it is coming forth and transmuting these experiences to result in greater well-being for those who are not experiencing it right now. It is being transformed just through our knowingness of this truth. We also know that this presence of God is a giving, receiving nature. It is always seeking to give of itself through us unto itself. And so, as we know that each and every one of us is an expression of this life, we know that every being has something unique, some gifts to share with the world that are valued and appreciated. And so for anyone that is not feeling that in this moment, let us know the truth that this is being revealed. Their value is guaranteed as expressions of God and revealing itself. 
I absolutely know that this presence of the divine is infinite. It knows nothing of lack and limitation, that these human experiences are just the result of us not fully awakening to that abundant nature of spirit. So let us remember that it is an abundant giver, receiver, infinite in its capacity to give and receive through each of us. And where anyone is experiencing lack in capacity to love or in finances or in creativity, that that, that abundant nature is being revealed and they are being moved into a greater experience of abundance. For anyone experiencing any sense of disconnectedness from love, we know that love is the core nature of spirit in each and every one of us. And in knowing this, we create the energy to lift others in knowing this truth. We can know it more deeply for ourselves and others can know it for themselves and fall into greater loving relationships with themselves and others. And knowing that that vibration of love is always for greater good, let us honor it by setting our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, for ourselves, for others, for situations of the world, we know that we are feeling the impulse of infinite love for greater realization and knowingness of itself. And so as we know that God is in every one of these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. <laughs> Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only Yes, I'm only here for God, only here for God, yes, I'm only here for God. Amen. Thank you, Darius. So this is the time in our service for um, our affirmative giving. And so just a reminder of different ways that um, you can uh, make your contributions. First of all, online, uh, just go to nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you straight to our donations page. You can also mail in your checks. Um, we certainly welcome every avenue through which uh, you donate, and please know that we'll be in the church office for 30 minutes after the service, so till about 8.15. Um, where you can call in your um, contributions with a credit card or a debit card. Thank you once again for all the ways that you continue to join us virtually and to contribute in this way so we can continue to be here and do this work together. So with that, let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. 
I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say Amen. Blessed always, blessed always for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and see. So, once again, we're just so grateful that you have joined us this evening for the service. We want to say thank you for, to everyone who's been of service uh, out there in virtual land. Thank you to practitioners Christine Crawford and Gail Pallott for holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, our Zoom team of Brenda Jordan and Alma Alvarez, thank you so much uh, for uh, you know, supporting us out there, and Melissa, uh, pardon me, it's Liz Racy on Facebook Live tonight, is that correct? Yes. Uh, how awesome. Thank you, Liz. So glad you could be there for us in this way. And uh, here in the sanctuary, Adam, once again, thank you for making sure we were heard and seen. Alex, uh, thank you so much for taking care of all the technical stuff there, just about, what, 12 feet in front of me? <laughs> to Doreen, who's been handling one of the cameras, Darius and Sam, just absolutely perfect, perfect support this evening. Thank you. And again, to all of you for being with us. A um, <clears throat> few announcements. First of all, uh, Darius's music is available on his website, Darius, D-A-R-I-U-S, Lux, L-U-X, dot com. Um, so you can get lots more inspiration that way. <clears throat> As I said earlier, uh, donations over the phone. Uh, you can call in for about 30 minutes after service and uh, make your donation over the phone or just go to nhcrs.org forward slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner will be available following the service on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook Live, just uh, go to our website, get to the Zoom site, and we can connect you with a practitioner for one-on-one -on -one private prayer. Uh, you can also continue to email prayer requests to us uh, to the email address prayer at nhcrs.org. Uh, and you can call into the office and leave a message on um, our Ministry of Prayer line. That's option four. And we check those messages and emails and send them out every evening to our core of practitioners. So you'll be well supported. Uh, hope you can join us again next Wednesday evening. The meditation starts at 6.50, service at 7, and my topic's going to be taking God personally. Um, invitation for you to continue to stay informed about what's going on through our website, and uh, if you're not getting our weekly blasts and monthly newsletters, uh, you can sign up for those on the website. Just a reminder, some of the things that you would know about are that Embracing Our Diversities Zoom workshop is still going on through November 21st. 
and this is a wonderful journey of learning to embrace your own diverse expression of spirit and others and uh, apply science of mind principles to healing the ways that we don't um, accept each other for our differences and the cost is $100. Um, grief support led by practitioner Carol Winokur is meeting this Sunday at 1 p.m. on Zoom, so you can get the link for that on our website. I uh, want to mention our in-person attendance and reservations sign-up process. So as we uh, mentioned last Sunday and um, Wednesday, we will be opening up the church gradually to small numbers. Um, and so our first Sunday that we'll be having in-person attendance, the congregation will be uh, the 18th, so a week from this Sunday. Uh, at noon, we will open up the portals on our website where you can go online. It'll be open for 24 hours for you to um, say if you're interested in attending. Service will be on the patio uh, with Dr. Mark giving the talk out there. The other parts of the service will be here in the sanctuary. Uh, we're honoring all protocols of masks must be worn. Um, you know, you'll have, when you sign up, you'll get a whole list of the protocols that we are honoring to continue to ensure people's health and safety. Um, and so the main thing to know about this is when you sign up, do not assume that you can come that Sunday. We will see how many signups we get and we will confirm. And if we can't get you in on the first Sunday, we'll try to get you in on the next one. But you must have a confirmation. We will be checking at the gate that each person that comes on site has a confirmation. Um, other than that, please know that our Zoom virtual patio goes on before and after service uh, for you to connect with the congregation. Teen Church continues to meet, uh, men's group, continues to meet Sundays at 11 o'clock, and our Zoom meditation from 8 to 8, 15 in the morning continues Monday through Saturdays. All of that information is on our website, nhcrs.org. Uh, so please uh, check it out. Really looking forward to seeing more of you in person, although I'm so glad we've been able to stay connected in this way, and we will continue to do so for quite some time. With that, let's turn our attention inward one more time. And so once again, I give thanks for all the ways that that infinite love and light of spirit has made itself felt and known throughout our time together. I know that throughout this time, spirit has revealed itself in so many ways, leading to healings, leading to transcendence of wounds that we may not have even been aware that we're there. And I know that that healing continues as we go forward and we become the blessing to also have the consciousness of healing for others. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they multiply as we go forward in life and in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, amen. Thank you once again for joining us. Let's close this with a song. that we read.